I'm Les Graham and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the use of slip leads in gun dog training. The slip lead is the gun dog trainer's preferred piece of equipment for training a dog on. Uh, it's so named because it's easy to slip on and slip off. It's generally made of rope and has a, a little stop on it so you can slide it close to the dog's neck so that the dog um, doesn't run through it or get, it doesn't slide off the dog's neck. What seems to be the fashion at the minute in the gun dog community is to change the slip lead into a figure of eight head collar and I'm going to show you how it's done. It's really not a good idea to use a piece of rope around your dog's face. It's turned um, by making the neck part of the slip long and then you twist it over and pop it over the dog's nose. Now the dogs absolutely hate this. It's quite thick so as the dog's looking down it's, its muzzle it can actually see this piece of rope over its, its eyes and the dogs really don't like it and try to claw it off. It's not designed to be worn like this and so what happens is you end up with this big piece of rope underneath the dog's um, jawbone where it can rub and cause friction. Also because it's not designed this way, when you use it, if you use it properly as a proper figure of eight, which means lifting it up, um, it starts slipping around. You can see this has moved and gone in the wrong position immediately and my dog's really not very happy wearing it. So let's take it off and start again. Let's slip it up. Good boy, Siggy. Clever lad. As you make a correction with it, if you use the figure eight properly, you should lift it up and that stops the dog from moving forward and it calms the energy down because the dog has to sit up because its head's come up. Everything calms down and then you can continue with your walk. But it's only really used for dogs that are lunging. Um, to teach a dog to walk on loose lead using a head collar is all very well if you're using it as a training aid, but using it to correct your dog or jerk your dog back or pull it back like this really isn't a good idea. The rope, because it is rope, will cause friction burns over time, especially if you've got a stretchy rope because as you correct the dog, the rope will, will stretch but then it won't release. So you've got this friction, almost like a Chinese burn going on your dog's face. The other thing is it does ride up into the corner of the dog's eyes and bearing in mind that your tears will drain into your nose it's not the best thing in the world for a dog. If ever you've worn eyeliner and then got tearful, you'll see that what comes out of your nose is normally the same colour as the eyeliner or the makeup you're wearing. And that just shows that the tears are draining into the nose. And a dog's world is actually defined by its nose. The last thing we want to do is block it up with excess moisture. So I'm going to take this off my dog because he's really not impressed with it. Good boy. And if you find that you're struggling training your dog how to walk on a loose lead and you do need a head collar, then the best thing you can do is go for a piece of equipment that is designed to fit the bill. There's lots of different head collars on the market. I prefer a figure of eight, funnily enough, um, but a figure of eight that's been designed to do the job. And this is a Gen Con, which stands for gentle control. The main difference between this and when you cross over a slip lead is that this has got a gap here where the, the nose piece slides through, which means it can move with the dog. The action is correct on the dog. So when you do a gentle correction with the Gen Con by just moving your hand, it's moving and it's releasing with the dog. It's not tightening and staying rigid around your dog's face. Siggy. I'm just going to show you how to put this on. Good boy. Over the ears. And then tighten the loops. And make sure the stop is up behind the ear. Sing your heel. And now if you look at the way that's positioned, it's so much better. And there's the crossover point here. Which means if you do give a correction, it's not... Um, tightening on the dog and staying tight it's actually moving and the correction is across the nose strap it, mainly though it's behind the ears when you use a slip as a figure of eight it just
twists the face around and it pulls tight behind the ears. It's not a great correction. The best thing you can do, regardless of what piece of equipment that you use on your dog though, is to train it to walk to heel nicely on a loose lead. If your dog's being pulled back all of the time, the second you take that lead off, the dog knows it's free and it'll be gone. So put the time in, train them how to walk nicely on a loose lead without having to pull them back or rely on equipment and you'll have a much nicer relationship with your dog. Good boys again.